innovative climate solutions play a critical role in agriculture and beyond. Today, I'm in conversation with Pratik Singhal, co-founder and chief operating officer at Ecozen Solutions, a climate-focused deep tech company. Welcome, Pratik, to this conversation. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Right. Uh, before we start off the discussion, if you could tell us the genesis of Ecozen, you know, and what was the problem that you were trying to solve? Right. So we started Ecozen right from our <coughs> college itself uh, while we were there in IIT Kharagpur. So during that time, uh, I, along with my other co-founders, were involved in some of the projects which we did. And we wanted to commercialize those projects and transform them into products. Right? Right. So that was a passion which we had. Energy was one sector which excited us. And that is how we actually started off thinking of let's let's make EcoZen, wherein we could solve the problem of energy and bring some innovative products to solve some problems around it. Uh, fortunately, we got <clears throat> access to some rural areas wherein we met a bunch of farmers and we could figure out that irrigation is one problem which is there in India wherein people right. need water, but consistency of power is a challenge. And where there is, there is a power, there is fluctuation and a lot of places in India, in, in fact, don't have power as well. Right. right. So we thought that maybe this is something which we should start off with. And that is how overall Ecotron came into picture, wherein we try to enable farmers by providing them uh, consistent power by use, using solar panels. Right. We make controllers, we make high efficient motors for them so that they are able to use that power to uh, get maximum water out of, out right. of it. We always believe one thing that in rural areas, if you want to uh, make any technology acceptable, you have to engage those farmers with that technology. Right. Also, you have to take care of the service of those technologies as well. Right. So that is where uh, we had ensure that all of our solutions are smart. So we provide IoT enabled right. controllers. Right. We collect data from those controllers. We guide them farmers on various aspects. Like suppose they're not washing their panels. We'll give them pop-up messages that, okay, you wash your panels to get the more, more right. water out, output out of it. If there is any issue in the motor, those things also can be done with the predictive analytics uh, model, which we have at the at the back end. Third is engaging them with certain features. Right. So they can just switch it off, on off their motors with that. They can schedule their okay. irrigation through that. If they know the which crop they are growing, we can guide them on what sort of a irrigation pattern they should right, follow. Right. So this is how we all went ahead. But what we realized was that just by solving the problem of irrigation, uh, they were able to take multiple crops, but they were not being able to double their income. Right. Okay. If you want really to help them to increase their income, it's important that whatever they're growing, that should also find a good market. Right. And there came the problem of food loss. And right. that attracted us and pulled us towards the next solutioning, which was we launched our decentralized solar cold storage solution. In that, we provide them a space. It's a it's a 20 feet container, and now we have a different variant form, wherein they can store their produce immediately right. after harvesting. It's a portable unit, and they can actually get better value out of it. So that is how overall Ecosen uh, uh, went into this products. Now, if I look back, uh, it's been almost more than 10 years. Right. What we have been able to successfully do is that there are four st technological stacks where you see Ecosan has been able to do really well. One is into the controllers. Second is into the high efficient motors. Third is, I would say, the IoT and the analytics angle, which we have been able to add to both cooling as well as pumping right. solutions. And fourth is a unique backup technology for cooling. So while we were making this cold storage, we had the option to go with the battery as well. But we didn't choose it because we realized that in rural areas, the battery backup could become an issue after right. two, three years and it right. can become a, more of a cost to it. To make it smart and sustainable, we have designed our own heat exchanges wherein we store the energy in water. Right. That water basically freezes right. and when it melts, that maintains the temperature okay. of the rain. Okay. So, we have realized that these are the four technologies where we have developed these two products. We have done a top line of 300 crores last year. We would cross 500 crores this year. But we don't want to restrict these technologies only to this sector. Absolutely. We are seeing that this can have multiple applications. Various B2B companies are, are looking to crack some problems, which we could assist them by using this technology. So going forward, now the evolved vision of Ecogen is basically 
to enable these technologies to towards a clean and sustainable tech, tech. and to solve the problems at a much wider space, not any particular to a sector, but look at from an angle that okay, these technologies have a value. Let's let's try to associate with as many as we can. Absolutely. So very interesting uh, opening points, Pratik. You know, so while you touched upon, you know how you are enabling the farmers by looking at the problems and then bringing out solutions. I'm sure there's a lot of data that is involved. So you're using cloud in some form to you know translate that data back to the farmers, right? So so that's what. So uh, each system is pushing uh, data to our server, and and that data is basically helping us uh, us to uh, learn every day from those systems, mm -hmm. and then we are able to to pop up those messages. So for one example is that like there is a motor which is running deep inside the bore, right? Right. You would not be able to figure it out that what's happening to that motor. But there are various mechanical components in those mo motor. Suppose some of them is just have an instinct to fail. Right. There will be some data change which you will be able to find, and you will be able to correlate from the pattern which you were getting earlier. Okay. Through okay. that, if you are able to take those insights and do some predictive forecasting mm -hmm. of those failures, you can actually help them to save those those failures. Absolutely. So that right. is how uh, it, it's helping me out. So yeah, basically, it's it's more about collecting that data. And at the back end, trying to get inferences from them. I believe you are also providing renting services to the uh, to, to the farmers. How did that idea right. emerge? You know, and specifically in the farm segment here. So, see what uh, while uh, trying to figure out the business model for uh, solar cold storage, what we realized was that it has a value. We right. were able to see that uh, people would be able to make income out of it. But the major problem with with them was that the cash flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have money right now, but if I use your system, I would definitely be able to generate right. uh, income. So how do you solve that? So that is where we came up with a leasing model. We used to provide cold storages to them on a rental basis, on a monthly rental basis. They used to store their produce and make earnings out of it. Right. And then uh, get, paid uh, the payment used to come. Very interesting uh, cases came in flower segments. So in Hyderabad, one farmer used our unit for storing chrysanthemum. Uh, sorry, in Pune, he used it for storing chrysanthemum. And he, because of the cooling effect, he was able to take it from Pune to Hyderabad okay. and get a better price because in Pune Mandi, everyone was doing the same thing. Right. So that is where the whole value came in, right? Although we were not able to scale that up uh, because of the capital constraints, but now we are taking this in a different form wherein we are trying to unlock the financing around the, our products. Okay. okay. Through tying up with NBFCs and maybe enabling village level entrepreneurs to own those assets okay. by enabling those right. financing right. and give those things to the farmers, farmers on, on rent. So, so that you are enabling the, the whole yeah, ecosystem yeah. there. Very interesting. But but the I always believe that if you want to encourage anyone to take a call on CAPEX, first you need to prove it, right? That CAPEX Absolutely. makes sense. So we did the proving and now it's more about solutioning through finance. Right. You spoke about next, you know, and you, 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 you're trying to address this, the sectors across, not, not just uh, keep yourself limited to the yeah. agriculture uh, space. What, what would those areas be? So see, uh, uh, each technology has different use, right? So now if you, let's talk about the thermal storage, which I talked about, cooling technology backup, right? right? Cooling backup can also be used not only in the form of uh, storing produce for farmers, but it can also be used if we, if we make it small, for retailers, right? We can also use it for home solutions, right? Wherein, for example, we are now expanding ourselves beyond India. So in Africa, power is a concern. Mm -hmm. now, if someone is at home, they wants to store their produce, they would not be having right. power around it. Right. So this backup could be used to enable those refrigerators as well, right? True. True. So this is an angle to it. Similarly, if you talk about motors and controls, motors controls may not be used only for irrigation purpose. It will be used for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning right. as well, right? Because it's a power guzzler. Right, right now, right. you know that with the temperature increasing, absolutely, the market of air conditioning is increasing. Now, there, if you have a unique solution around controllers and motors, you would be able to save power, right. and we can connect with any B two B company and and scale that up as well. Right. Then there is mobility space, wherein we see that going forward, EV is going to become popular. Right, where EcoZen can also contribute through through their motors and controller solutions. In case of IoT. We have, in fact, successfully uh, launched our battery analytics module, mm -hmm. wherein we are not restricting it to whatever we're doing to our product. Right. In EV, we have launched a battery analytics module, wherein we are able to uh, get the state of charge and health of the battery in a proper format. Right. And we are doing pilots with some of the very big B2B companies around it. Okay. So, okay. all four stacks I see what could enable is more of clean, sustainable, 
tech tech uh, for various applications. Yeah. Right. So I, I missed asking you one question here. You know, so what's your global presence? You know, apart from India being one of the largest markets here. So uh, we we have delivered units uh, in East Africa, like Kenya. Uh, we have been working very oh. aggressively in West Africa as well. Nigeria is, right. is something which we are focusing very high on and some of the parts of Southeast Asia as well. Uh, we are talking to governments in Philippines, wherein uh, I think Manila government has also come up with a solar cooling facility as well. Right. So, so you could say East, West Africa and some part of Southeast Asia is something which uh, is something where uh, we have presence. In India, uh, we have served more than 150,000 farmers right now okay. in terms of product. Right. But at the community wise, it has affected more than a, a 10 lakh farmers. Uh, we have Huge. been able to generate almost like uh, more than 2 billion kilowatt hour uh, units of clean energy, clean energy. And abated more than 2 million uh, CGH uh, carbon ten em emissions. So that's commendable actually. So yes. that is where we are right now. Right, Pratik. Thank you so much for your time, your great insights and all the best. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. Right. That yeah. was Pratik Singhal, co-founder and chief operating officer at Ecozen speaking with us. Do stay tuned for more such videos on ETH Insights. Thank you.